Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Uncrewed, General Atomic's wingman recon drone announced. FAA requests comments on vertiport design. And Oregon may see loosening drone rules. Hi, I'm Holland Lee. Welcome to Aero News Network's Airborne Uncrewed program, a weekly news program covering all things uncrewed, in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Uncrewed Vehicle Systems International. Let's get into today's stories. General Atomics Wingman Recon Drone Announced General Atomics has announced its newest addition to its portfolio drones, the Gambit, described as an Autonomous Collaborative Platform, ACP. The drone will be a jet-powered autonomous recon wingman for manned aircraft, working in tandem as a lower-cost, low-risk option to send on scouting tasks that would be too dangerous for larger aircraft. Using a blend of artificial intelligence and autonomous systems, the Gambit will, quote, enable pilots to see deeper into hostile airspace, detect threats first, and provide time and space for critical decisions and actions, end quote. All indications of the Gambit and its base trim point toward an unarmed reconnaissance drone, with no stated provision for future armament. General Atomics described the name as an allusion to initiative to, quote, leading from the front, end quote, and grabbing, quote, the tactical advantage to open a world of possibilities, end quote. It's unknown if the name has anything to do with a previously announced Suhoi product in a very similar vein, the Checkmate. The Gambit appears to be smaller and lighter than its Russian analog, at least as it was built from the outset to be a lightweight UAV with no piloted version. After these messages, MQ-9 reaches 2 million flight hours. Pilot Communications USA is proud to introduce our latest headsets, the Carbon A1 Active Noise Reduction and the Carbon P1 Passive Headset. Carbon fiber makes our headsets 30% lighter than others, which significantly reduces pilot fatigue. Our Blue Link Hand Control Unit allows you to connect two devices at the same time, and the record out capability can send audio to an onboard camera or digital recorder. Get the headset that's so light you may forget you're wearing one at pilot-usa.com. Whether you're charting a steady course or pushing for the ceiling, Hartzell Propeller has been elevating flight for over 100 years. It's in our passion for engineering and research. It's in our dedication to testing the limits of performance and creating propellers that are as safe as they are sexy. Now, together with our dedicated family of companies, we're propelling the future of aviation. We are Hartzell Propeller, built on honor. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate, or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Welcome back. In the next Uncrewed Minute, let's take a brief look at a few shorter stories making the rounds of the uncrewed vehicle communities. MQ-9 reaches 2 million flight hours. The MQ-9 program has passed 2 million flight hours in service around the world, proving the General Atomics UAV's place as the standby in duty-ready autonomous aircraft. The MQ-9 has made it all the way to Block 5 in its life cycle, now boasting 27 hours of endurance at speeds up to 240 knots, up to a ceiling of 50,000 feet. Using its embedded video capture, synthetic aperture radar, and more, the aircraft is a reliable choice for a remote-controlled eye in the sky. Russia to suspend RD-181 support Russia halted its rocket supply to the U.S., and despite many believing that production stateside is both plentiful and capable enough to mitigate the problem, a suitable replacement for the RD-181 engine supplied by the country is not yet ready for launch. Russia has decided to rescind any technical support from the RD-181 it sells to the U.S., a problem for the strategic space launch schedule, since the engine is the only one in use for the orbital ATK Antares rocket. Navy completes F-35 recovery. The F-35 has gone for a few too many swims over the past year, said the commander in charge of salvaging the most recently submerged fighter. Navy Captain Gareth Healy oversaw the unmanned operation to recover an F-35C Lightning II from the icy depths, dredging it up from 12,400 feet. 
A delicate combination of remotely piloted diving equipment and a diving construction crane allowed the aircraft to be pulled up and appear almost entirely intact, less some unspecified damage. Small Niagara Town to Enlarge Model Airfield Model aircraft and drone enthusiasts in the small town of Lockport, New York, got some good news this week when they learned of a planned extension of the Niagara County model plane field. The county legislature voted to give some land adjacent to the current airfield, originally acquired in 1962 for use as a recreational area. Since then, however, the 58 acres has sat unused until Lockport Supervisor Mark Crocker showed an interest in the plot. Well, that was our Uncrewed Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. FAA requests comments on vertiport design. The FAA's Office of Airports has begun requesting comments on the current draft for vertiport design. Engineering Brief 105 contains interim safety standards for those facilities that will soon dot the American landscape following the rapid proliferation of electric VTOL aircraft, making their execution part and parcel of safe and confidence-inspiring operations for a new aircraft type. The groundwork being laid out now could go on to become lasting bedrock in the transportation system for good, meaning any programs or shortcomings codified now could prove hard to address later on. The engineering brief, however, isn't permanent, being, quote, intended as interim guidance for vertiport design until a more comprehensive, performance-based design advisory circular is developed, end quote. While temporary, the bulletin will be used as a measuring stick for certain initiatives in the works now. Quote, these guidelines are mandatory for vertiport projects receiving federal grant in aid assistance and for federally obligated airports, end quote. The bulletin continues. The agency warns that despite the ephemeral nature of the EB, construction efforts will be affected through its effective period until more lasting, fleshed out regulations are created. Quote, the FAA recommends using the guidelines contained in this EB for the design of new civil vertiports and for modifications of existing helicopter and airplane landing facilities to accommodate VTOL operations, end quote. Coming up after the break, Oregon may see loosening drone rules. At Diamond Aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at AviationSafetyResources.com. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit flyskyleader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Welcome back. Oregon may see loosening drone rules. The Oregon Parks Department has some promising rule changes for drones and model aircraft, and they're asking for comments. Their new proposal floats a change that would allow operators to fly freely throughout the Oregon State Parks, rather than being restricted to limited areas clearly delineated for drone flight. The rule would also create no-fly zones in some campgrounds, wildlife protection zones, and parking lots, allowing for a sufficient buffer for privacy, safety, and wildlife protection. The Oregon Parks and Recreation Department says it is, quote, intended to provide clarity for drone pilots, hobbyists, and the general public to know where drone takeoff and landing is allowed and prohibited within a state park and along the ocean shore, end quote. Before putting the rules into effect, the Park Service is asking for input from all interested in the issue. Public hearings will be held virtually on March 30th and 31st at 1800 Pacific Time. Well, that's our program for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, and Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.